Hi, this is Anna. Welcome to my video. As I'm recording this, today is August 1st. It'll be less than a month till my friend Liam's birthday. Therefore, this video is going to be about making him a chalk bag as a gift because he is a rock climber. We'll see how it goes. Well, a few things. First, since it's Liam's birthday, I'll be printing his face on the outside of the chalk bag. Second, since I'm a photographer and taking inspirations from the history of photography, I'll be doing so using cyanotype, which is basically a chemical reaction involving UV light. I've never done it before, so I'm just going to learn on the spot. Third, since I study art history for the past year, I'll be doing it in the style of the artist Andy Warhol, um, particularly his work, Marilyn Diptych. In terms of fabric, I have three kinds. Both of these are linen and cotton mixture, if that makes sense. Uh, this one is finer. This one is a little more rough. So this one will be the layer uh, on the outside where I'll be printing Liam's face on. This one is going to be an intermediate layer to give the chalk back some support and make sure it doesn't get too floppy. This one is fleece and it'll be the inside layer where the chalk is going to go. Now I'm going to apply the cyanotype solution on the outside fabric. And since it's going to stain, I have two pieces of plastic underneath and I'm probably going to sacrifice my hands. Um, I think I'll be okay. There's solution A and B. I'm doing 20 mil each, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Ugh. Shaky hands. Ah! Oh my god, that's a little more than 20, but it's okay. And I'm mixing them in the a tea container lid. Great, this is awesome. <laughs> Do this. Now it just needs to dry in some place without any UV light, aka my closet probably. Sorry, my room is kind of dark right now because my dad uh, is trying to fix my light. But okay, this is where it's gonna go. Cool. Now I'm currently in Photoshop Express. Um, this is Liam's photo. We're gonna keep the subject and add a background. I think I'll just do white. Save the photo. I'm using an app called Snapseed because I no longer have the Adobe subscription from my school. I'm gonna bring down the saturation to zero because it's gonna be in black and white. I'll bring up the contrast. Huh, is that a good idea? Maybe not. Maybe just a little bit. Okay. I think the area around his mouth is getting a little too dark, so I'm just gonna... <laughs> it's very funny. Um, bring up exposure here. I think his face falls into the more gray area of the spectrum, so I'm gonna bring up the exposure um, to stand out from his shirt and his hair. Gonna bring down the exposure of his hair. Now I'm going to crop his face into a square. Um, this is okay. Now I'm going to add a frame. Finally, since we are printing a negative, we will have to um, flip the curves. All right. Very nice. We're going to save this. I'm doing the same for Baby Liam photo. Save a copy. Just in case you're curious about how the printing process works, you can pause the video and look at the email I sent to my photography teacher. Now I just need to wait for 15 minutes. The setup I have here is to have a mat underneath to provide an even surface and then put the fabric on top of it and you put your transparent film on the fabric and finally put a glass panel to push everything down. Welcome to attempt number two. Okay, as you can see, I fucked up the first time. So I'm gonna remove this, rinse, and see if this works. 
What is going on? Okay, hey, this is a good start. <laughs> Okay, this is not as bad. Um, at least you can see Liam. I just ran outside because I was afraid that people were gonna, gonna, uh, gonna move my stuff. Even though this looks kind of stupid. Hi. While I'm waiting for my Liam print to be done, I decided to do two more prints with my um, neighbor's bamboo leaves. Look at this. This is very um, professional. This is a lot of mosquitoes, so I'm just like trying to jump around the whole time. Guys, this is attempt number four. I fucked up the last one as well. This was attempt number one. It's not very successful because I think I left it in my closet to dry for too long and it was not sun sensitive anymore. I don't know why. And this was attempt number two. This time I dried it with a hair dryer uh, in 20 minutes and um, it was still a little moist. So there was some um, condensation forming under the, under the glass that was pressing on this piece of fabric. Uh, it's not bad, so I thought there's some room for improvement. And this was attempt number three. It's a little fucked because um, I think, I don't really know why, maybe the fabric was, um, I applied the, the paint on this side, even though I don't think it would matter. But maybe this side, I don't know, but <laughs> it's not good. And then this time, um, I don't know what happened. It, it just didn't work. Um, maybe I dried it too much. I thought this one was successful because it was still a little wet. And um, this one, is, it, maybe it was just too dried. So I dried it halfway through for the fifth time. Um, it, it didn't work. I don't know why. So I'll just take attempt number two. Now I'm going to cut it out as marked. I'm going to sew this outside pattern on this thicker piece of fabric, like I talked about, um, by hand. Good luck. It's going to take me a while. Finish this part up. Second one done. I finished the third one. This is actually the best one so far. I'm officially done with the first um, sewing part. I kind of just figure things out for the grommet part. Uh, mine came in with a thing like this and a little thin ring. I first cut a hole using my nail clippers. Then I poked this one uh, through the fabric this way and added a ring on this side. I just need to press down the, the top part, um, but I don't have the tools. So I use the back of my nail clippers, which is made of metal and try to just like um, get each side to bend. And I use a metal spoon to smooth the sides a little bit. So right now it looks like this. Um, it's not bad, it's pretty smooth. Um, yeah. The same goes with the bottom of the chalk bag. I have to sew this thicker layer to the outside layer. But to do it creatively, I'm gonna sew Liam's name on it. This is done, even though it's not really symmetrical. <laughs> My next step is to sew the bottom to the body of the chalk bag. Ah. Yeah, I'm gonna sew it like this. And um, let me cook, I'll be back. Okay, this is the result when you flip everything inside out. Since it was really rough at the bottom, so I'm going in with the second round of stitches. This time it's tighter, the blue ones, as you can see. Why am I doing this to myself? Now, I'd like to take a moment to explain the intent behind such design.
while in the Marilyn diptych, through repetition and transformation of a publicity photo of Marilyn Monroe into total visual and emotional flatness, there could be a few arguments Andy Warhol was making. He could be turning her into a mere sex symbol of pop culture. He could also be questioning such culture. Or he could be making an argument about his own identity. I mean, that's what makes his work so controversial and thought-provoking. By contrast, by creating Liam's face in repetition, along with the unintentional failure to use cyanotype to create crisp images, Ashley makes an argument that Liam is an interesting person, that even through the blurriness you get to see his smirk, and by symmetry you see that such personality first started to thrive even at a young age. It's starting to look pretty nice. <laughs> Okay, so you cut two one-inch long um, tube of a straw. You cut this one open and you put one inside the other so it gives some uh, reinforcement. And then you take your dad's duct tape. Tape it around. <laughs> Dear Liam, I'm recording this message to wish you a happy birthday and um, apologies for the really weird lighting. This is actually kind of cool. Whoa. It's 1 a.m. in the morning. I'm just walking around campus. Sometimes I do wonder why you are my friend because, well, not because that you're two years younger than me. I talk to you in a way that you're just like my peer, but because sometimes you're actually a little annoying. But for people that know you a little more you're thoughtful in certain ways i wish you a really happy birthday oh yeah and also you should not lose the chalk bag i made you because it took me forever to make like over 20 hours 25 hours i don't know so if you lose it i'll be super sad and um i'll question our friendship you know what i mean so happy birthday and bye <laughs> 